next on the list, we've got this topic, courtesy of RA, regarding um, Richie Horton and his up-and-coming clothing label, right, for Plastic Man. And for some reason, this has caused a bit of a stir, especially in the comment section where he uploaded this. And the title is Richie Horton and Swish Knitwear Brand Frankenberger reveal plastic man clothing line prices for the limited edition clothing range from 170 euros to 3200 euros and for some reason people within techno kind of got really really pissed off about this i guess because you know I, for some reason some fans think you're not allowed to make money or you're not allowed to charge whatever you want for stuff and people would they want to buy it, they want to buy it. i think people still are in this kind of under this false idea that the scene is somewhat underground to, to be ranting and raving at Richie Horton about underground anything is absolutely ridiculous considering how high level he is, considering his experience in the scene, considering where he's kind of taken his career, to basically be, be bemoaning him and calling him out and saying that he should be more underground is absolutely ridiculous. It's like telling flipping Carl Cox he should be playing in fucking 200 pound, sorry, 200 cap venues. You know what I mean? This guy is playing in fucking auditoriums and shit. Why would he go to a 200 cap venue in a basement bar somewhere and pay for and play for fucking free drink tokens it makes no sense but anyway let's, let's read the article Richie Horton has collaborated with a Zurich based fashion label Frankenberger on a limited edition run of Plastic Man knitwear with prices ranging between 1,000 um, sorry 170 euros to 3,200 euros the collection consists of sweats hats and mittens and double blankets all of which are 100% cashmere the products are also sustainably created with Inner uh, Mongolia according to a statement of the website which Horton's net new event series for our minds also just to kind of make this a point ra knew what they were doing they knew what they were doing that title for this article the subtitle for the actual story itself the mention of the prices again they knew what they were doing they knew this would cause a bit of a stir they're probably lacking for the clicks as well so you know this new era of journalism is fucking gross they knew exactly what they're doing this feels like a fucking dance music version of a of a of a daily mail article or something they kind of you know they, they kind of put the bait out there and people bit um, it continues. This isn't the first time Hoyer has partnered with the fashion brand in 2021. Plastic Man soundtrack proud to full 20, sorry, full winter menswear presentation at Milan Fashion Week, which was incredible, by the way. Watch that show if you haven't already. Further examples of entrepreneurship include co founding music technology, um, fund launching a sake brand, and releasing his own DJ mixer. For our own minds, for the, our minds will take over the. Garasha ADE this Friday from October 21st with Horton joined by Fiak Kobolsi, Sama Ab Abdulu Haidid Haya. I, I find it interesting when this happens because this is clearly like a um, Sama Abdul Hadid, right? This is clearly uh, an attempt to kind of curry the, the sort of favor and the attention of the young kids, right? Who clearly wouldn't listen to Richie Horton because they just wouldn't, right? Um, they're into probably younger, cooler people. It makes sense. That's not, it's not a slight on him. It just is what it is. But I find it interesting when he kind of lines up with people like this, right? Like Fiak, Kobosi, Sama Abdulid. Like clearly, sorry, Sama Abdul Hadid. Hadi, is it Hadi? Abdul Hadi, yeah, Abdul Hadi. Is that Sama Abdul Hadi? I keep pronouncing the name wrong. But regardless, I find it very... Um, cringe and almost kind of I won't say pathetic but it feels a little bit lame if you're already in a legend that he is already you should be established enough to kind of hold your weight on your own or better yet getting people from your generation who can kind of speak to that kind of music that sensibility or people that you're just inspired by in general but i can't imagine rishi Horton going out and you know and flipping paying a ticket price or going somewhere to go and see fiak kabosi or sama play anywhere let's be honest he's clearly just you know booking them alongside him for the clout or the promoters booking him along booking those people alongside him to kind of you know to fill out the venue a little bit and to make it a little bit more worthwhile and to obviously hope that it flipping sells out and whatnot because you're hoping all these people have very big fan bases especially online you're hoping that a few of them are going to come out and see them play and also want to see him play too but i found it a little bit cringe personally for me but let's continue to the actual instagram page because you'll see the comments and the pages are absolutely ra ravaged but to, i'll try to make a quick point on this right Richard Horton, I feel like, has always been somebody who approached, especially when he kind of became successful, there was always kind of this thing around him, especially in Detroit, that he kind of sold out. And I don't think he ran away from it. I think in general, he's 
kind of I feel like he kind of wanted to always evolve and kind of become bigger than just a dance music DJ that's probably why he doesn't play on traditional turntables anymore right he doesn't really play vinyl he doesn't really play on CDJs he essentially uses controllers and other bits and bobs to basically get his set and to basically play and to express himself and I've seen him do it um I was lucky enough to go to a an event that he put together for, I forgot what the name of it was for, but it was for something he was promoting. I think it was like a, a piece of gear or something else he's promoting in fucking forward of all places, which was awesome because um, we got to see, I got to see actually his whole kind of, you know, range of fans, people like myself, chin strokers, really old people who kind of have grown up with him along the years, young people who are just curious and interested about him, especially the Plastic Man era. All that stuff was pretty cool to see in you know, and obviously to see Richie Horton play in a venue like Fold that's, you know, maximum what? seven hundred people, five hundred people and to be that close to him up, you know, at the front and stuff and seeing him do his magic because usually he's playing at flipping crazy big places was quite cool, I'm not gonna lie. And he actually he smashed it to be honest as well. Cause I've always got this theory that the bigger the person they actually the more comfortable they're gonna be in really small places because the bigger places they probably take their foot off the pedal, they kinda go through the motions because everyone there is, you know, probably there to hear fucking one or two songs of yours that are really popular. But when you play at these really tight small spaces, usually you're with people who kind of give a shit about what they're listening to and what they're going to experience and they're clearly coming there to kind of vibe out and rock out and enjoy your fucking journey so that usually works in that regard but going back to him anyway he's always been very entrepreneurial he was also the kind of person who was trying to fucking shift sake in a nightclub if you've ever been to a restaurant and you've had you know Japanese fucking food or whatever you know or any kind of Asian cuisine you will know how expensive sake is it's not cheap even if you buy it by the bottle even if you buy it by the glass in some places it's not the cheap thing to buy so the fact that he was going to clubs and trying to shift his sake clearly shows you that he was on a whole nother tip because you'd imagine a lot of people who are going out there are going out there you know with fucking 20 quid in their pocket to spend on drinks and maybe a couple of grams of ket in their back pocket but that's it they're not going out there to spend like 200 pound or whatever on sake but the fact that he tried to do it i feel like tells you everything about his motivations and what kind of vibe he's on because you're trying to maybe elevate things in his own way offer something different and interesting maybe it worked maybe it didn't work but that should i just think that should shouldn't that should tell you where he's kind of going direction wise and it shouldn't be a surprise when he puts out product like this and tries to sell it for you know 150 euros to 3000 euros this shouldn't be a surprise and also it's a collaboration with a fashion brand if you also do this with louis vuitton while virgil was still alive that would that would obviously be the same sort of thing in terms of a vibe it would look exactly the same Taking these pictures like this with a blanket at the rave is a bit cringe, I'm not going to lie. But still, I think it looks pretty cool. It's not for me, of course. You know, I'm never going to be wearing fucking fingerless gloves like I'm, you know, like I'm a DJ fucking MMA fighter or something behind the deck. I think that's pretty, pretty lame. But I understand that some people might like it. And if they want to buy it, they can. If they want to look like him, fair enough. But there's nothing about this, in my opinion, that's appealing. Nothing at all. The logo is just printed on some cashmere stuff on items. It basically looks like regular merch outside of the blanket, right? It's not really that special. Maybe that's the interesting part of it. But a lot of the criticism, like I said in the comments, is more so this idea that he's flipping underground, which is not. He's not underground in the slightest. This guy is as commercial as they come. But some people are expecting him to be selling T-shirts on flipping, you know, um, through the loom blanks for like 20 quid or something that's not going to happen but the comments just read through and one person says here the blanket is 3,200 euros I can book plenty of DJs for that amount or make a nice donation to a non-profit or discount business to class tickets again I don't think that's to do with anything he's selling to be honest a, a good point but it's not anything to be selling um, obviously some people are liking it Ellen Allian says they love this um Klein Klonk says that legendary Hector Oak says wow I don't know if that's a wow for the prices or wow because I like it DJ Anna says heart eye emoji another person says when techno is rich um, it's when techno is for the rich it is lost capitalism engulfs everything Richie Horton can't help himself but what are you talking about can't help himself are, are people basically saying that because he gets a higher mind in terms of his DJ fees that means he can't charge anything more when it comes to him selling anything outside of that that's insane so that basically means he only allowed to make money 
money one way, basically playing behind the playing playing behind the DJ deck. But if you try to do anything outside of it, and you price it in a way that you want to position yourself next to some of the higher luxury brands, suddenly you get called out. For me personally, I just don't think it looks that impressive. It just looks a bit shit. Like I said, it's just this logo on like some nice cashmere tops and whatnot. So it's not something I'd be super eager to run and buy. And also, if I'm spending three hundred euros on an item, I'm not exactly going to be wearing it to a rave in it, unless it's plenty. I got for them on something. I mean, but this doesn't really make any sense. I'd rather just buy that than buy this sort of thing. And that person says, glad I hung my $20 plastic man shirt from 2000 or to hang on to, sorry. And that person says, I'll stick with my $25 slip match. Luxury techno is in my cup of tea. So if people, again, I don't get his points, but if people here have $20 merch or $25 merch from plastic man, if that's the case, why are you bothered about this merch? That's a couple of grand. Clearly, he can make both things. He can collaborate with a fashion brand and make high-end stuff, quote-unquote, but then he can also make basic shit for fans who just want to support um, you know, and kind of put some money in his pocket, whatever. That's pretty cool as well. Person, what the fuck, 720. Person says, why well, I do this? First, the Gucci collab, then the NFT nonsense. Now, obscenely juice priced um, jumpers. This isn't techno. This is EDM style. Greedy bullshit. You're losing the room. You know what? The point here, I think, is the best is the NFT thing. Richie Horton is still shilling NFTs. Despite everything that we know about NFTs, the fact that they've essentially fallen out of favor, most NFTs are lost a considerable amount of their value, but this guy is still shilling NFTs and still on this kind of wave of trying to get them integrated with dance music and, you know, the fucking blockchain, all this sort of nonsense. That should be something that people should be, you know, maybe going at him more, but I don't get the idea of making an expensive clothes with an expensive fashion label and selling it and then people getting upset about it. Um, it, it just kind of, it means that if he did a collaboration with Prado or Gucci, people would see it as what as him basically spitting on the scene and not honoring his underground roots the man is not underground look at that haircut that, ha that haircut is not of a man who's underground in the slightest when's the last time we went to underground rev and you saw a guy with a hairline like his with that kind of haircut it doesn't exist this is somebody who's clearly you know of a certain standard has a entire team around him has somebody that probably organizes his calendar somebody that gets his fucking matcha in the morning and shit and all that kind of stuff someone maybe that maybe massages the flipping soles of his feet like those things are what he does on a you know on a regular basis and it makes sense because he's probably booked and busy you know a lot every every other weekend um but another person says here a mug it is then <laughs> i fully understand the price well done cashmere is expensive that said it's maybe a bit tone deaf to launch it right now given um the, the overall squeeze anyways lovely products i hope it sells which is again maybe something there's something in it but when is the right time to sell stuff during a global recession do you wait until the recession is over when is it going to be over do you wait in the middle of it like when when is it because it's not like people are not spending money it's just that there's not a lot of money out there that people are spending or whatever it may be but they're still standing they're still spending it um another one says here to end and we'll move on it says um the, this collection is not for real fans it's for rich people who celebrate you because others say you're the best but they don't feel the music <laughs> this this gatekeeping of fucking artists and fandom is absolutely cringe and lame um they say you're not uh, real fans you pose on instagram you can afford the ibifa but you'll never be a real raver a real raver doesn't stand still he dances he doesn't have his mobile phone in him and he doesn't drink champagne and above all doesn't wear 720 euro jumper privately sorry yo you are talking absolute shit real raver does this real raver does that what are we doing now this is this is typical chin stroker behavior are we now policing how people rave how they enjoy themselves what they drink what they wear this is nonsense especially now where clubs are suffering more than ever there's not a mountain of people out there on the dance floor you're now telling people how to go about and do things but to be honest um i'm probably speaking at my ass because i think all this backlash has worked because if you actually click the link that takes you to the store look what happens there 404 page not found so either it's limited edition and it's all sold out which i don't believe or i can't imagine that happening or they've taken the site down because of the backlash which is pretty gnarly you do a whole collaboration with a company you maybe have to split the production cost and whatnot you have to go through the stress of you know making it producing it shipping it all that stuff and then you finally get to putting it out people lambast you in the comments right the comments keep going if you just scroll there there's more and more and more bad comments going there people are not really kind of leaving their thoughts and opinions on there to the point where you feel like you have to take the product down that i think is stupid in my opinion if you made it you made it put it out there put your name on it stamp it and just let it be what it is 
is. But all this kind of walking stuff back, I'm not for in the slightest in that mirror guys. Because I think most people just need to grow up and accept that some of these guys, especially someone like a Richie Horton, like this dude is probably what is what is his net worth actually? Because some people are being a little bit silly with this stuff. Like, what is this man's net worth? So this is what Google are saying, right? We don't know in in general. Let's see, wealthy gorillas. This is a random website that's updated on October the 22nd. It says roughly, this man's net worth from DJing, right? Playing other people's music or his music and having that awful haircut. Like we're saying he might be worth $11 million. What do you expect someone that makes $11 million or who's worth that to be doing? You expect them to be selling, you know, through the loom t-shirts every single day. It doesn't make any sense. And if you want that kind of thing, you can support people like this. Can't decide. You can support people like this. Kind of music. They make decent enough priced um, items that you can back and support, um, especially if you're into that kind of music that they, they do or you're into the DJs themselves. There's plenty of options out there that exist, but people, again, you know, or you make the effort to go out and buy these things because they're not, you know, maybe the coolest thing in the world or they're not directly in front of your face or they're not promoted or pushed by super, super, you know, level star flipping DJs. You probably won't. So all this complaining about it is a bit nonsense to be in my life because, you know, there's always these options here that exist, you know, for how much these tees, like $20, $30, 30, 30 euro t-shirts exist. And obviously 700 and fucking 50, 20, whatever, um, you know, cashmere jumpers also just some plastic, man. So it's up to you, innit? You gotta choose your poison, but I don't think it's a bad thing if people wanna go out there and make some extra wonga and use their celebrity to do so. Me personally, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing at all.